Welcome to the fourth and last in our series of four webinars. This is all about predicting field return rate from production process yield data. Now the background to this is quite simple. <clears throat> when products are produced and things like alternate components are introduced as normal in mass production, cost reduction, etc., the effect on volume production field return rate is pretty critical. It's obviously clear if any mistakes are made and if any data is not available and we take a, a risk decision, that it can be critical. It's not feasible to always continue with high volume, accelerated life tests, or even ongoing reliability testing throughout the product lifetime. Hence, a range of issues can be easily missed. If we can use a model to predict our expected field return rate, in our early life warranty period from process data, this gives us an excellent no-cost opportunity to manage outgoing reliability at the production level. In parallel, of course, it's still advisable to apply some form of ongoing reliability testing to accelerate any issues that may require higher stress levels to induce or stimulate the defects. This presentation is based on a real-life case study of uh, LCD TV manufacturer which is generally made up of an LCD TV, it's made up of an LCD module, a power board, and a control board with cables, etc., and plastics. But the main electronics are the key parts of this. Each sub-assembly will have its major design weaknesses. Power supply generally will be weakest contributor. Also, we put the final assembly together, everything together, defects will occur in the process when all the subsystems are assembled together. So clearly, we find defects in the process. We have yield levels but that means there are inherent latent defects waiting to happen, and we want to use the yield data to actually try and predict what will be our warranty failure rate. And this case study shows exactly. As before, we have our bathtub curve. We are very interested in early life on LCD TVs, home electronics, etc. That generally is a six to nine month period. So from this data, you're going to see how we predict a 12 month failure rate using process information. Now the background to this is simple. 80% of early life failures are generally process related. The remaining period of warranty will contain a wide range of design and component issues, many expected or many not expected that escape qualification detection. Process failures compare very closely to those found during good strong design quality testing and we covered design quality testing earlier in one of our webinars. Hence process failures should be taken seriously and then can be used to help predict our design quality failure rates during the warranty periods. Now in LCD TV field returns are generally a mix of many different failure types. Confor component fails because perhaps supplier process escapes, TV design quality and reliability issues, functional issues, process and assembly escapes from main board, power board manufacturing processes, TV Final assembly process escapes, software issues, LCD panel defects not found in qualification or simply escapes from the LCD producer process. So we have a wide range of issues that find their way to the field and we have a wide range of issues in the process. What I'm going to show you is how we correlate, how we measure and how we use it as a way to predict. Now with field failure reasons it's difficult if not impossible cover all possible failure mechanisms in new product accelerated stress testing. Nowadays we use small volumes, we do testing as quickly as possible. You've seen in earlier webinars how we set up the ALT, how we use test strength modeling for early life testing, etc. But still, we're not going to find everything. Accelerated stress testing is very good to detect possible epidemic cases, but even these are also seen at some point within process yield data, if you look closely enough. The DPPM, parts per million, Defective parts per million levels of individual failure types in the field are so low, an ALT will only address epidemic, epidemics, major failures, and we'll never see these in the ALT, but we will for sure see similar in the process. Different production vintages have different process yield levels because of material, manpower, and method changes. Obviously, if that's the case, we're going to ship a different level of early life defects. This will lead to differing process escape levels and varying field return rate levels, hence the need for a model that's going to focus on using volume production process yield data. Now when we set up the process prediction model, 
As we've said, we're going to try and predict field return rates from processed data. It makes perfect sense. But first, obviously, we've got to correlate the process failure types and the field failure types. The, the correlation has got to be good um, if we're going to then make a prediction on the same defects in the process. If we're not doing that, then we're not predicting on the right defect types, and therefore there wouldn't be a correlation. But generally, reliability engineers tend to only focus on accelerated life tests. It's a lot of risk. You don't get much from it. You don't find too many defects. You make it as good as possible. Ongoing, they use testing of low volume in the production process, really finding defects. So it's almost impossible to make realistic predictions of uh, outgoing warranty failure rates. In this case, you can see in real life, this is the power board from the LCD TV from the client in question. And we can look at the top 10, or more than 10, but we can look at all of these defect types. We can see the green represents the process. And we can see between the green shaded and the non-shaded column, almost direct correlation of every single defect type. Not surprisingly, it's easy to find defects on power supplies. And the ones in the process to what we see in the field in the 12 month warranty period are almost identical. And you can see, for example, an ongoing reliability test occurrence, we rarely find them because we're, we're not able to test enough units, etc. On a strong design quality reliability testing, the blue, yeah, we'll see a lot of one off defects over a long period in time. But we may not do anything with it because we'll regard it as an intrinsic defect and we can't see it as a design issue. And that's fair enough. But the defects are there and they're all going to contribute to an average failure level within the warranty period. On the main control board, we see the top defects and we see the green. Pretty good correlation. Certainly on the top, almost the top 10, we have the defects, direct correlation. Um, we see on our ongoing reliability test, yeah, we see the odd defect there because the control boards, we're exercising them a lot with the display changing all the time under stress. Again, one-off type defects that we're not going to solve because they're not classed as epidemics. So therefore, we have the same situation as the power. We see them all in the process and we see that we've seen them all in the field. So that makes perfect sense to try and develop the model to take the process yield data, failure rates in the process and predict the outgoing warranty failure rate. Now, component makers, semiconductors have used prediction techniques for years to try and predict expected customer return rates. This is a common method where they use end of line test yield, T is test coverage, plug it in, and they can basically try and predict the escape level and PPM. That's generally not done for a warranty period, but purely an escape level that will arrive at the customer in infant mortality type problems. We're taking that a stage further to take it well beyond infant mortality into early life and out to the end of the initial 12 month warranty period in this case. Now for the LCD TV, a lot of data fitting was done with several of my clients and on TVs because I, at the point I was working with the top three TV contract manufacturers in the world and used a lot of data from different processes to develop the right model. And this is what we came up with. R9 is effectively a rolled yield level, which is the correct way to look at yield, the total yield loss in the process. Split it in, for example, on power board, where we do ICT test, functional testing, and then the power board get tested when the final assembly is put together. So we have three yield levels that are recorded. We roll them, we multiply them all up, and we get a rolled yield. R9 goes into this with our data fit, and we predict what will be the percentage per board field escape. And we can see it year on year using average levels, how that looks. You may ask, where does 0.838 come from? Purely a lot of data mining and fitting the right equation. To, to get to this, tried log normal, tried log log, etc., and found this was actually the best repetitive to fit with a lot of data analysis. The similar approach has been applied to the main control board and also the LCD TV final assembly process. Now, if we look at the entire process and we perform the same prediction modeling in the same way for each sub-assembly each month, we can show the variance in predicted field return rates. Power board, we can do it. We do the same for main board. We use a rolled yield, uh, which is purely a PCBA function test and main board final assembly yield multiplied together. And we actually have a different data fit factor. It won't be the same as power supply, 
because it's different failure rates, wider range of defect, possibilities, etc. So it's different. But it's all the same data mining and looking at the same, correlating the same defect types. For final assembly, we do the similar modeling and we use the final assembly yield minus electronic defects and we'll define a final assembly escape level in the same way as we've done for mainboard and powerboard. When you see in the chart here on the table, we have a, a standard LCD panel failure rate expected, and that's simply constant because the panels are not actually manufactured by these TV assemblers. So in effect, we get, as you see from January through to November 2011, we can see how the failure rate is changing each month, and that is normal because of the level of latent defects in the manufacturing process and they are clearly going to escape in different levels to what we see in the warranty failure rate. So this gives us a way of monitoring month by month how well our products are going to perform in the 12-month warranty period. We do it with other LCD TV makers, the same model. If they've got higher yields, better quality producer, we see fewer latent defects, and we see predictions are much lower. It's clear. The model will work as long as the defect types, there's correlation, and we do that initially, we use the modeling, and we can do our data mining and make very good predictions. Now, once we put this to use, you can see the predicted 12-month failure rate, two different factories of the same manufacturer, differing yields, hence they have different failure rate predictions for the same product types, the same designs built in different locations. Clearly, we see difference. And that's the very important part here, is to be able to drive manufacturing excellence, drive world-class yields, and minimize the escape level, which basically drives your early life warranty failure rate down to the lowest level. And here, as you can see, as you'd expect, as processes improve, the yields get better, and ongoing, there is a downward trend in the actual predicted field failure rates. Now, when we start correlating this with measure of field return rate, this is the key to everything. It's fine making prediction, but if it's not realistic, it's a waste of time. Here we are focusing on fully assembled LCTV field return rate levels versus process predictions. We're offsetting them three months to allow for an installation lead time. And we can see the red is our basically averaged factory field return rate, which is taken from the domestic market. And here in the green, you can see the prediction from the same factory. So for the same product, we see a pretty good general fit. Obviously the red line is rolling together on average of three months at a time of field data. Different products or different vintages get mixed in the field. So if we were to do the same kind of mixing and try and simulate that with our prediction, yes, we would get something very similar to the red line, the red trend line that you see there. Now, continuing on correlating with measured field return rates, if we focus on sub-assembly prediction on power boards in this case, we have a great correlation. You can see here our factory power prediction, the green line, and the actual field return rate. And what we've done here is, as said in the earlier, in the previous um, slide, we've done a rolling average to try and get them closer. Now, here we see the trends are extremely good, but good correlation, but the model in this case, we need optimized a little bit. So we would change our factoring and we'd get the red and the green pretty much sitting on top of each other. So we're able to simulate how months are mixed in the field, get an average, make a prediction, look at the data in the field, and then make our model even more accurate. Now the benefits of predicting from process data are obvious. A wider range of defects are experienced in the process that are reflected in the field returns. The traditional approach of ORT doesn't find enough defects. If we just run ALT and ORT with small sample sizes, then a well-designed and poorly designed product may perform very similarly in these tests, especially if test duration is limited. But these same products, different designs, could perform wildly different in the manufacturing process. And as a result, the escape into the field will be very different. So process data highlights a wide range of defect types and sources of defect. Hence, using the data correctly is going to clearly show differences and product reliability due to both design, component, assembly quality, etc. Once correlation data is analysed, more accurate predictions may be made by tweaking the calculation model. Basically, I've showed you that in the power supply case. 
New product introduction can use the full suite of test data and process predictions to assess product profitability more accurately and whether it's ready for volume release. Process prediction data can be used to understand if prediction from ALT is within the expected confidence limits, but all the time it's important not to over or under predict by too much and the process data is a great way of ensuring that happens. I'd like now just to finish this presentation and effectively we will happily take questions, emails, etc. And we'd be more than happy to go into this in more detail with anybody who was interested in this. Thank you very much.